I came to women's history when the women's movement illuminated an absence in my own work. I'd been working on the Jewish labor movement in New York in the 1890s, and along with all my colleagues, I could not imagine that women had been present. Indeed, the labor movement seemed to conjure up an exclusion of women. It was all male. So I wrote a dissertation that systematically excluded even the women I accidentally came across. When I realized that this had happened, and it wasn't until the women's movement drew it to my attention, I went back to the archives and searched for the women I had forgotten. And I found them, creating not for the first time, but for the first modern moment, a history of women in the labor movement of women who were poor, who were immigrant, who were activist, in rebellion, a history of women we could be proud of. We came to women's history in the late 1960s and the early 70s because we were part of a feminist political movement and a cultural movement. Um, this was a period when, as you know, women were not hired in universities. We felt that we were a phalanx moving to change the world and as part of that, we wanted to know about ourselves. Like many people, um, I went out, and th that was a year when you could go out and meet Betty Friedan, Kate Millett, Phyllis Chesler, uh, T. Grace Atkinson in one week <laughs> in New York. And um, I went to almost all of these people and said, what's this all about? And by the time I had finished interviewing all these people, I was one. In 1968, uh, when I was in Boston, um, all of a sudden there was a women's movement. And um, I was first taken by it and began to think about it, but then it dawned on me, um, there must be a history to this. No one had ever taught me this. I started doing women's history when my daughter, Hannah, was born. Uh, reading children's books that were all about boys and animals that were male. And suddenly I thought, this is what the history she would get in school will be. All about men, generals, presidents, famous inventors who are all male. And I thought, that, that can't be right, that that's all there is to American experience. I was drawn to women's history because of our lives and the lives of our friends. I mean, here we were, women in the world, um, being treated by this history of men, usually boring men, men in lies, men, you know, history of slavery, saying Sambo and Sally were happy on the old plantation, and we knew we needed another history. Well, I think everybody deserves a history. Everybody needs to know where they came from, where their roots are. Um, as an African-American woman, I was first interested in African-Americans. Uh, when I looked at African-American history, I didn't see myself represented. I didn't see the history of African-American women. Um, I felt uh, just, just drawn to that subject very naturally because I wanted to know more about who I was. I became interested in women's history because I began as a student of the history of the Civil Rights Movement. And the women I interviewed, the people I spoke to, uh, and the history I was studying made it clear that not only had women played a large role in this movement, but that their experiences were colored not just by racism, by the challenges of class in American society, but by sexism, by gendered expectations. And in order to understand their struggles and the struggles I was trying to understand, I had to begin to think critically about the history of women. It was really because of the women's movement, which hit when I was a graduate student and I became interested in pursuing the history of women as many activists did become interested. And that was concretized for me when I had an opportunity to teach while still a graduate student. When I entered graduate school in the late 1960s, the women's movement was really beginning to take off in major ways. And we were all really swept up in the in the movement and what it offered and the potential that was ahead. It was a very exciting and, and very thrilling time to be entering the field of history. 
got into women's history through women's writing. Um, my graduate work was in the English department at Columbia, and you could get a PhD in English literature and never read a woman. So I noted an absence. Where are the women? <laughs> and I'd been doing that for maybe 30 years, working on absences, who got left out, and trying to understand who writes the record, you know, what we call the historical record, what's in it, what's missing. Traditionally, the kind of ways that people have um, thought of competing voices or dominant voices um, have served, have been a disservice to including the voices of women. So, you know, the a kind of phrase that we like to use is that we're not giving voice to the voiceless because these people have had voices, but we are is giving ears to the earless. I came to women's history um, mainly initially through the archives. Um, I was studying the plantation cells and my interest was in labor history and plantation labor and in what happens with labor questions at emancipation and there they were, the women. And then I, I didn't quite know what to do with it, but luckily for me, I came along at a moment when there were women historians and a few men uh, who have begun to do this amazing groundbreaking work. There is a world of documents that nobody had read and it's still true. It's still true. And what historians want are documents that no one had looked at, no one had assessed, and no one had learned from. And I've never run out of questions and documents to learn from. Basically, when I was growing up, I loved to read, and in, from third to fifth grade, I read my way through all of the biographies of women in the school library, and I just became completely intrigued by all of these women's lives. And they were things like Martha Washington, Amelia Earhart, Helen Keller, I was completely intrigued by. So I was really interested in all of these individual life stories, but then when I got into history class, it was like there was no intersection. There were no women, really, in history as I was learning it then. And even as I went on with my education in college and even graduate school, the women were often missing. And I just felt like if we're missing half of the population, how can we have the full story? I've always been interested in women's history since I was young, 10, 11, and I have a really vivid memory of going to the FDR Presidential Library and being so much more interested in Eleanor Roosevelt's story and realizing that that wasn't a side story that was central to the understanding of F the FDR presidency in our country at the time. So I think my entry point into it was through a woman role model. I became interested in women's history when, as a child, I would go to historic sites and houses and living history museums with my family. And I was always interested, especially in the spaces where women worked, like the kitchens or a garden, where it seemed like women were real. There was a connection to the past and to real people that resonated with me. I came from a household um, that was dominated by women. I had a strong mother, I had a very strong grandmother, um, I went to school and had strong teachers, so I lived in a world that was very much shaped by women. And when I started to study history in college, I realized not only was it you know, lacking women figures, but the topics that were um, discussed in these classes and in these books didn't um, kind of satisfy my curiosity to kind of find out more about um, the women who had shaped my world and had been shaping many other worlds as well. I'm identified by others as a historian of women and gender history, uh, but I identify as a historian of the United States because I think that the history of women in this country is the history of the United States. It offers us a different way to think about core issues of citizenship, of labor organizing, of inequality of poverty.